I'd say half of the astronomy related videos on YouTube are about black holes. People are clearly fascinated by black holes, but every time we talk about them, there's a sort of group of people who say, I don't think they're real. Well, they're real, they're fascinating, and today I've brought on a special guest who will help me explain to you all of the separate independent lines of evidence to tell us that black holes are a real thing. Joining me today, I've got my good friend, Dr. Paul Sutter. He's a cosmologist, an astrophysicist, and he's here to help us convince you that black holes are real. Paul, how's it going? I am doing great existing outside of a black hole. <laughs> right, yeah, let's stay that way. Never better. Yeah, never better, exactly. So I, I'm sure you get this as well, where people have this sort of off the cuff, knee jerk, yeah, I don't really like it, black holes. Uh, yeah, you know. I don't like them. I don't think I've, I've just decided they're not a real thing. And so I thought that this is a wonderful example of science in progress. And we can talk about the, uh, the various lines of evidence that show that these things are real. So conceptually, what is a black hole? Right. A black hole is exactly what the name suggests. It is a hole in space time that is black. I thought they were neither holes nor black. It, it's a black hole. They're, they're they're black. They're black. They do not emit light. They, in fact, nothing can escape, not even light. If you fall into a black hole, if you cross something called the event horizon, you cannot escape. That is it. It is a mathematical definition. It was found in the mathematics of general relativity, our understanding of gravity. And then it turns out that nature also makes them. <laughs> right, right. So they were predicted by the math. And then someone said, I wonder if these things are real. I wonder that's the real thing exactly yeah. yeah all right so then if you know to go from that initial idea to i wonder if these are a real thing what are some of the separate lines of evidence that show us that these things are really out there right right the number one the first way that we discovered that black holes really do exist outside of theory was back in the 1970s with the discovery of what are called x-ray binaries this is where a star is orbited by something that is emitting, let's call it a copious amount of x-rays. And you might be tempted, okay, whatever, it's a bright source of x-rays, it could be a white dwarf, it could be a neutron star. Ah, but using the properties of that x-ray source, we can figure out the mass of the thing at the center and how big it is. And with that, you get a density. And, and the densities of these things are bigger than white dwarfs, are bigger than neutron stars. They're denser than anything else in the known universe. They're black holes. Right. And so you may be able to see X -ray, an X-ray source. I mean, there are X-ray flares that come off of the off of the sun from time to time. Uh, when you go and get your x-rays done, there are x-rays that are briefly flaring through your bones. But to have that amount of x-ray radiation coming from that compact a region for that length of time, you need to have an object with that kind of density out there in space. Exactly, exactly. Something has to be powering all this gas. So what's happening is it's not that black hole itself that's emitting, but it's the material falling into the black hole, compressing and heating up that's emitting all those x-rays. Now you talked about the smaller version, these x-ray binaries, but they scale up into the supermassive variety as well. Right. When they scale up to this supermassive, when you're talking about black holes, millions or billions of times more massive than the sun, then they become the quasars, which are the absolute brightest things in the entire universe. And again, when we take that same idea that you've got millions, hundreds of millions of times the mass of the sun compacted into an area smaller than the solar system, with x-ray radiation flooding out of that tiny compact region it has to be a black hole right what else is it what it, like if you don't believe that black holes exist that's fine then you have to explain x-ray binaries you have to explain quasars you have to come up with other things and there isn't other things there aren't other things there's no such thing <laughs> so so let's go on to another line of evidence i mean if that whole line is not up you know is not your preference let's go let's look in, in another place 
okay, okay, if that's good, not good enough for you, Mr. Kane, we can look at observations of the black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy, an object we call Sagittarius A star, even though it has nothing to do with stars. Long story. But we can't see the thing in the center because it's a black hole. But we can see the stars orbiting it. And over the decades, we've literally watched these stars move in their orbits. And using those orbits, we've been able to calculate the mass of the thing in the center. And like you said, it's like 4 million times the mass of the sun. And we can't see it. So it's like watching a solar system with no sun in the middle. There's something there that's really massive that doesn't emit light. And then, of course, thanks to the motions of these stars, you can calculate the mass of the blank object, the missing star. The thing in the middle. Yeah, whatever it is. And, and again, it has to be something with millions of times the mass of the sun compacted into an area that is smaller than the orbit of Mercury to be able to have that kind of effect on the stars as they're whipping around this. Exactly. That, that ain't a neutron star. Yeah, yeah. Well, if there was a neutron star, we would see it, right? That, that too. But I mean, if that example isn't enough for you, even fairly recently, astronomers used Gaia to find a, a regular, a stellar mass black hole that was part of a, a multiple star system. Yeah, this is, and this is the, the common theme. We don't see black holes directly, but we see their effects on their environments. And in this case, we found a multiple star system where one of the stars was wiggling around a lot and there was nothing else there to make it wiggle that much. There was an invisible, unseen companion that was tugging on it, at it that had a mass several times the mass of the sun. That's not an exoplanet. That's not a brown dwarf. If it was a neutron star or white dwarf, it would be glowing because that's what they do. It was a black hole. Before we continue on with this conversation, I wanted to take a moment to thank the generous support of our patrons. Thanks to Storm29, Jack Hallmark, Raf Podolsky, Gervaiso Breeze, Maria Kobitz, and the rest of our 843 patrons for their generous support. Want our videos early with no ads? Join our community at patreon.com slash universe today. All right, I need another line of evidence. What? That's not enough? <laughs> no, keep going, keep going. Fine, third. fine, yeah. fine, 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 fine. So we know what happens through our mathematics, through the mathematics of general relativity, we know what happens when two black holes merge. And when they collide, they emit waves of gravity that echo throughout the universe. And with instruments like LIGO and Virgo, gravitational wave detectors, we can see the signatures of colliding black holes. This was first predicted by Einstein way back in 1917. It wasn't until 100 years later that we were able to actually do it. But there they are. They're little gravitational waves passing over the Earth due to the collisions of black holes. And when this discovery was made for the first time just a couple of years ago, it was a momentous occasion. Right. Almost certainly Nobel Prize worthy. No, Nobel, Nobel Prize for everyone. Well, I guess for three people. But, um, but then, I mean, we're at the point now with the LIGO experiment that they are seeing these mergers every week or so with incredible precision. Um, and of course, you can double down on this with, with the discovery of the Kilanova, where you had two neutron stars colliding together. Astronomers were able to see the visible flash, and they were able to see the gravitational waves as they passed the Earth. Right, and now that when we just get gravitational wave echoes from LIGO, there's no flash, there's no boom, there's no bang, there's no electromagnetic counterpart at all because it's two black holes merging together. Right. And again, if you don't feel like you believe in black holes, fine. Just explain whatever it is that is causing What are they waves. seeing at LIGO? Yeah, yeah, well, what waves of it. But I mean, LIGO is seeing the distortion of space time that is causing you and everything on planet Earth to squeeze and stretch out as these waves wash over the planet. That takes a lot of energy. That takes a black hole. That takes a black hole. All right. Well, give me another line of evidence. This is fun. Keep going, man. I can do this all day. <laughs> Gosh. Nobel Prize winning discoveries aren't enough. No, no. <laughs> Give me another one. Fine, 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 fine. So we can't take a picture of a black hole. 
because they're black. They're not emitting light. But if you were to say, point your camera at a region of space where you think a black hole might be, and you see a bunch of stuff with a black hole in the center, you might have taken a picture of a black hole, which is exactly what we've done. Yeah, and of course, we're all familiar, I hope, with this incredible image of M87 that was taken by the Event Horizon Telescope. Uh, you can't get that without actually taking that photograph. That's the only... You, you, you must have a black hole to make that picture possible. To, to make a hole of blackness in the center of the picture. And I think what's wonderful about this is that we really are on kind of the cutting edge of this science. You know, three of the lines of evidence have been really laid down in the last couple of years with other observations over the last few decades. But we really are at the beginning of, of a long future of building up this science. What are some of the other lines of evidence that astronomers are hoping to add to that list in the coming years? Yeah, like you mentioned, we first learned about the existence of black holes. Uh almost a hundred years ago with the work of Carl Schwarzschild. And when he first discovered black holes, everyone's like, ah, no, they didn't exist. That's just a weird mathematical artifact. Then over the decades, they thought, oh, maybe they do exist. I don't know. And then we started seeing X-ray binaries and then we got gravitational waves and then we got the Event Horizon Telescope. So in every single observation has agreed perfectly with what we predict black holes to behave like using general relativity. So if you don't want black holes to exist, you have to explain a hundred years of understanding. And then as time goes on, we won't have just these, we'll have more observations of black holes orbiting stars and how they affect their orbits. And we'll also have something called microlensing. When a, if we stare at a star and a black hole happens to wander along our line of sight, we'll get a brief bending and magnification of that starlight that can only be due to a black hole. And we expect future surveys to see gobs of black holes using this technique. Well, Paul, it was a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today about the existence of black holes. Black holes confirmed. They're real. I have a poster on my wall. You have a new book. <gasps> That's right. That just magically appeared in my hands right here in my camera frame. With As you were saying that, it's my new book. It just came out. It's called How to Die in Space, A Journey Through Dangerous Astrophysical Phenomena. Um, it's, it's a hilarious book. I had so much fun writing it. Uh, I hope you have a lot of fun reading it. You can find out more about it at pmsutter.com slash book or by checking it out on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, all the usual book retailers. And Fraser, I have a little surprise for you. For the second book in a row, your name is on the cover. Awesome. Oh, I'm glad to be right associated with it. a little it. quote I, from you. Yep. <laughs> um, I, I hope a bunch of the ways to die include black holes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Black holes get two chapters just for themselves. Plus, they play major roles in like three other chapters. Like half the book is about black holes. Which matches what I mentioned at the beginning of the video, that half of uh, astronomy videos on, on YouTube are about black exactly. holes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Paul, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming and explaining the science. And, uh, and good luck with your book. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Here are the names of the patrons who support us at the $10 level and more. Want to see your name here? Support the work we do? Go to patreon.com slash universe today. Once a week, I gather up all my space news into a single email newsletter and I send it out. It's got pictures, brief highlights about the story, and links you can find out more. Go to universetoday.com slash newsletter to sign up. And did you know that all of my videos are also available in handy audio podcast format so that you can have the latest episodes as well as special bonus material like interviews with me show up on your audio device. Go to universetoday.com slash audio or search for Universe Today on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And I'll put a link in the show notes. We did a video about how astronomers use several of these techniques to discover a pair of supermassive black holes orbiting each other confirming even more theories about relativity and gravitational waves. And you can watch that video now.